The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. These are busy days for Summerfield's Commissioner of Public Water, and they call for a little relaxation in the evening. On this particular evening, he has permitted himself the pleasure of a few hours' diversion at the movies in the company of his attractive friend and neighbor, Mrs. Ransom. And at this particular moment, we find him at her front door saying good night. You'll have to be a little patient. He's still saying good night to her. (laughs) Gracious, you do say good night to a girl. Yeah. I'd. I'd ask you in, Throckmorton, only it's pretty late. Oh, that's all right. I don't have to get to the office till 10 tomorrow. (laughs) But I have to be downtown at the dentist at 9. Oh. And uh, I have to get my beauty sleep, you know. Hal Shoe might not like me anymore. (laughs) So uh, I think I'd better say good night. Well, I'll be seeing you then, Leela. Good night. Oh, Throckmorton. Yes? Never mind. What was it, Leela? Well, I was just wondering how I'd get down there tomorrow morning. But uh, as long as you're not going to the office till 10, I guess Horace Hooker wouldn't mind stopping for me. Well, now, wait a minute. You don't have to do that. There must be some way to work this thing out. But how? If you're not going to the office till 10. I know. What? I'll go to the office at 9. Oh, Oh, Throckmorton, you're so smart. (laughs) I declare you think of everything. (laughs) Yo, uh, you're sure you don't mind now? No. I I wouldn't be putting you out. No. Because I wouldn't want you changing your plans for me. Glad to do it. I'll pick you up tomorrow at a quarter of nine. Oh, thank you, Throckmorton. And thank you for a perfectly gorgeous evening. I don't know when I've enjoyed Abbott and Costello so much. (laughs) By George, it certainly doesn't take much to make a girl happy. I guess it's all in knowing how. Wonder if there's any of that fried chicken left. I might just look in the icebox before I... Marjorie. Hello. What's this, my dear? Up so late? You have school tomorrow. I know. What are you doing there? Writing. Writing what? A letter. A letter to who? Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, why can't I ever do anything right? Marjorie. Nothing I ever do is right. Nothing. I'm just a... Just a... I wish I were dead. No, no, my dear. You don't wish anything in the car. I do, too. Why, that's ridiculous. Why, if you were dead, you wouldn't have any fun. I don't have any fun anyway. <laughs> that's why I wish I were dead. <laughs> oh, Marjorie, honey, don't do that. Come here. You're not mad at me, are you? No. And tell your old uncle what's the matter. I don't know what's the matter. There must be something wrong with me. All the boys I know either join the Navy or go away to school. (laughs) Is that all, my dear? Why, you had me worried there for a minute. Now, listen. You just go up and get a good night's sleep and you'll feel better. I can't. That's nonsense. You run along to bed and tomorrow morning you'll feel better. I guarantee it. Uncle Mort, you don't understand. Now, don't tell me that. I know all about these things. Yes, indeed. Sleep, that's what you need. (laughs) Or would you like something to eat first? A little snack before you go to bed, huh? Some of that nice fried chicken, huh? I know what would fix you up. A hamburger. I could make you a hamburger. If Bertie's got any hamburger... How about it, huh? A nice hamburger with a slice of onions and relish, maybe, and... 
ketchup all over it. <laughs> what do you say? Uncle Mort, don't you ever think of anything but your stomach? <laughs> Marjorie, I was just trying to suggest something. Oh, I'm would... sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me, Uncle Mort. Pay no attention to me. I, I guess I'll go to bed. Yes, you do that, my dear. You do that. You'll feel better in the morning. Poor kid. Well, I don't know what she's worrying about. I don't know whether to have the fried chicken or the hamburger. <laughs> Leroy, when you finish monopolizing the sugar, you might let somebody else have some. Oh, sorry, I'm just sick. Four is plenty. Do you want to get diabetes? Now, what time is it? Bertie, what time is it out there by the kitchen clock? What time is it? Yeah, my watch has stopped. I'm sorry, Mr. Gillespie. The kitchen clock has stopped, too. Oh, fine. I'm supposed to pick up Mrs. Ransom at a quarter of nine. If anybody would wind any clocks around here... I wound it, Mr. Gillespie. I wound it all the further it would go. <laughs> well, maybe that's the trouble. When do the clock stop? July. Yeah, July. July. <laughs> Bertie, you ought to tell me about these things. Not, not wait till somebody needs to know what time it is. I told you, Mr. Gillsleeve. Never heard about it. Never heard a word about it. Mr. Gillsleeve, I told you about that clock once. I told you 20 times. That's right, Unc. I heard her. You eat your oatmeal. Okay. <laughs> Miss Marjorie, it seems like you ain't eating anything this morning, hardly. I guess I'm not very hungry, Bertie. You're awfully quiet, my dear. Anything wrong? No. I just don't feel very well, that's all. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe we'd better call Dr. Pettibone. Oh, it's not anything to call the doctor about. I think if I just stay home today and don't go to school... Well, perhaps that's a good idea. Ha! <laughs> Leroy, why can't you ever be decent for once? Why should I? Nobody ever lets me get away with anything. Gosh, I can be dying practically. Leroy... <laughs> Leroy, something tells me it's about time you started for school. Yeah, me too. Is my lunch ready, Bertie? Right on the hall table there. Bye, Unc. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marge. Goodbye, Leroy. You mustn't feel badly, my dear. I don't think Leroy meant to hurt you. I don't mind about Leroy. He's probably right anyway. Why, Marjorie? Sure, he's right. I just don't want to go to school, that's all. I don't ever want to go to school. Because... All I am is clumsy and unattractive, and nobody will ever have anything to do with me. Marjorie. <laughs> now, now, that's not true, my dear. Why, you're one of the most attractive girls I've ever seen. And graceful, too. No, I'm not. I'm a clumsy ox. The gym teacher said so. Listen, anybody, anybody who says you're clumsy has got me to fight. When did the teacher say this? Yesterday, in ballet class, right in front of everybody. My George, I'd like a word with that teacher. <laughs> What's the use of fooling myself? She's right. All the boys I know either leave town or join the Navy. <laughs> I told you there was something wrong with me. Oh, brother, we're back to that again. Now, listen, my dear, this is all a lot of nonsense. Why, you're as graceful a girl as I ever knew. I was saying to myself only the other day, I said, Marjorie certainly is graceful. I got it. Uh-oh, Mrs. Ransom here quickly, Marjorie. Got a hanky? All right. Uh. Good morning, Mrs. Ransom. Hello, Betty. Is Mr. Gildersleeve ready? Be right with you, Leela. Come on in. Yes, and come right in. Oh, thank you. I'm afraid I'm a little early, so I just ran over to save you the truck. Why, Marjorie, honey. Hello. <laughs> It's all right, Leela. It's nothing at all. I was just telling Marjorie I think she's unusually graceful for a girl her age. Don't you think, Leela? Don't you think she's graceful? Oh, yes. Indeed, I do. Yes, indeed. But... Well, what? some fool teacher just made a remark. Woman's got no business teaching ballet or anything else. Yes, probably doesn't know a thing about it. She's probably got knock knees herself. <laughs> huh, Marjorie? <laughs> Well, if you ask me, she's probably an old maid. That's right. Now, you just have to expect that, Marjorie. If there's one thing an old maid can't bear, it's the sight of a young girl who's prettier and more graceful and more attractive than she is. I've had that trouble all my life with old maids. <laughs> 
There, you hear that, my dear? This teacher just happens to be married. Oh, the married ones are worse, believe me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think Marjorie could be a marvelous ballet dancer if she put her mind to it, don't you, Leela? Oh, I do, I truly do. Some of them are quite tall, you know. I don't care anything about ballet. I only took it to get out of gym. I just don't want people thinking that oh, I... Oh, but you should, Marjorie. Well, I don't know anything more wonderful than being a ballerina. They lead such glamorous lives, don't they, Throck Martin? Huh? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, that's right. Why, why, just think of having the whole world at your feet. It, not bad, eh? Oh. <laughs> think what fun it would be, Marjorie. Flowers at every performance and people kissing your hand and suitors, loads of them always hanging around your dressing room. I'd send them away. All I do is study and work till I was really good. Of course. But when you finally arrived, think of it. Diamond necklaces. Uh -huh. and, and college boys pulling your carriage through the streets. Uh -huh. <laughs> and gentlemen drinking champagne from your slipper. <laughs> and husbands. Why, some of these girls have as many as four and five of them. All rich. Oh, Uncle Mort, do you really think I could? Have five husbands? <laughs> no, be a dancer. A really good one, I mean. My dear, it's my firm conviction that anybody can do anything he wants if you just put his mind to it. Anything at all. Is that how you got to be a water commissioner? <laughs> no, that's an example of what can happen if you don't put your mind to it. <laughs> Oh, well, just the same your uncle's right, Marjorie. You could show that old gym teacher if you really wanted to. Think it over. That's right. You think it over, my dear. Come along, Lily. You'll be late to the dentist. Oh, gracious, what time is it? Uncle Mort. Uncle Mort, wait. Uh, what is it, my dear? Could you... Could you drop me at school on the way? Certainly, certainly. Only too happy to do so. Feeling better, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I don't know how to handle girls. Why, I ought to be running a school. <laughs> Well, how did school go today, my dear? School? Oh, school was all right. I talked to Francie today, Uncle Mort, and guess what? She's going to be a dancer, too. Well, that's quite a coincidence. We decided we don't care what the old gym teacher says. We decided she doesn't know anything anyway. We're going to practice every afternoon, Francie and I, so we're really good. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I guess so, Leroy. Just throw it. Thanks. Pick it up when you get through reading it. I always do. How can you say that? Do you have to read it on the floor, Leroy? Where else? Well, it just happens that I'd like to show Uncle Mort something. Go ahead, my dear. But I have to have room. It's what Francie and I were practicing this afternoon. Pick up the paper, Leroy. Oh, for corn's sake. I can't even read in peace around here. Now, Marjorie, what were you going to show me? Well, these are the positions you have to learn for ballet. You really ought to have music for this, but anyway, this is the first position. Well, very graceful. Uh, no, Leroy. And this is what they call the second position. Well, like a regular ballet dancer. You call that dancing? Perhaps you could do better. Sure. Chase me! I'm a butterfly! Leroy! I'm the south wind! Woo-woo! Make him stop! Kiss me! I'm a piece of thistle now! Leroy, watch that lamp! Whoop! <laughs> I was watching it. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny, thistle down. But you want to know something? A little instruction in dancing wouldn't hurt you one bit. What? I mean it. I have a good mind to have you take dancing lessons. Oh. Dancing lesson. It might teach you a little grace, wouldn't it, Marjorie? I doubt it. Well, it might at least <laughs> might at least teach you to walk through a room without falling over those feet. Besides, every boy ought to learn to dance. It's an important social accomplishment. But when would I take lessons? I haven't any time. I have to practice my piano every afternoon. You don't want me to neglect that, do you? My piano? I haven't heard you practice in days. <laughs> Well, I've been intending to. I've been intending to right along. I didn't want to get stale, that's all. I'm going to start again tomorrow. I know, Uncle Mort. Leroy could play the piano for me to practice to. Great idea. Hey, enough of 
Madame George. Leroy, you'll play the piano for your sister. Oh, Uncle. Um... You love the piano so much, let me see you sit down there and play. Now. Now. God. Ready, Marjorie? One, two, three. <laughs> Very pretty, my dear. And very nice, Leroy. I ask you, was there ever so much talent in one family? <laughs> By George, I've got a good mind to retire. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. You know, I've always been a bit curious about what makes people buy one kind of food in preference to another. So I asked my wife the other day why she preferred parquet margarine. Well, as I recall it, John, some of us were talking about spreads for bread. Well, one of the girls mentioned what a wonderful flavor parquet margarine had. So you went right out and bought some, eh? Well, no. It was a few days later that I noticed parquet in the store. And I saw it was a real money saver. Only about half the price of costly spreads. Then that's why you bought parquet. Well, partly. Then I saw the name Kraft on the package. And when I put it on the table, you and the children kept calling for more. Yes, sir. Day in and day out, it's the best spread I ever tasted. And parquet margarine is a favorite with millions of families. Because parquet's flavor is still unmatched. And just to remind you, don't forget that the Kraft Cheese Company is now the Kraft Foods Company. So when you buy delicious, economical parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, remember it's a quality product of the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, whom we find relaxing in his parlor before supper with the evening paper. At least he's trying to relax with his niece, Marjorie, diligently trying to master the ballet with the aid of a portable phonograph. Anki, watch me, Anki. Huh? I did it perfect that time. Didn't you see it? I'm sorry, my dear. One of the headlines caught my eye. Now be sure and watch this time. I will. Are you watching? Oh, yes, I'm watching. Don't you think I'm doing it better? Yes, much better. That's fine. Don't you think you ought to rest a little while, my dear? Oh, gosh, I'm not tired. I've been sitting down all day. This relaxes me. Just don't overdo it, Marjorie. Don't worry, Anki. Hi, everybody. Well, hello, Leroy. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hi, Uncle. Hi, Marge. Hey, look what I traded from Piggy. A real army rifle. What? Look, look what it says there. U.S. Army. Oh, it's nothing but a wooden gun. Okay, it's wood, but it's official. <laughs> they use them for training. Oh? Yep, U.S. Army. Some gun, hey, Uncle? <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't point that thing at me, Leroy. <laughs> Why, George is pretty good, all right. What did you have to trade Piggy for it? Well, I got it cheap because his cousin sent him two. What did you give Piggy? Just the front tire off my bike. It was shot anyway. <laughs> Leroy, but you can't ride it without a front tire. It'll cost you $3 for a new one. Where are you going to get $3? I'll save up my allowance. Don't worry about it, Uncle. Your allowance. Let me see the gun. Okay. See, it's got everything... Trigger, barrel, all the stuff. They don't work, do they? No, but they look good. Feels good against your shoulder, doesn't it? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll get a bead on that light bulb. Squeeze that trigger easy. Bang! Oh, for heaven's sake, you're worse than Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> My dear. <laughs> If you children will excuse me, I think I'll go into my study till supper time. Okay, Uncle. Look, Leroy, don't you think I'm doing better? Better? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Stuffy in here. A little quieter, though. 
<laughs> well, well, the Tigers finally made it. Wish I'd go to Chicago and see the World Series. Uncle Mort, will you make Leroy go upstairs, please? Oh, why don't you go upstairs yourself? No, no, what is this? Can I leave you children alone a minute without a row? Well, I can't practice my dancing with Leroy in the room. What did I do? I never opened my mouth. He was looking at me. Then he started pointing that gun at me. <laughs> oh, my dear, you've had quite a little time in the parlor. You can't have it to yourself exclusively. But if you want me to practice my dance, Why don't you take the phonograph upstairs for a little while, huh? Then there won't be anybody to disturb you. But my room is so small. You may take it in my room. I have no objection. Okay, I'll go up there for a while. You want Leroy to help you with the machine? No, he'd probably drop it. Uh, let me see your gun again, will you, Leroy? Sure, play with it all you want. <laughs> you know, it feels just right. It must have some weight inside of it someplace. I guess so. I wonder if I can remember the manual of arms. Let me see. You start with it down here. Huh? That's order arms. And that old tarp sergeant will holler, right shoulder, hop. One, two, three. Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Can you do any more? Sure. When he wants you to put it down again, he says, order, hop. One, two, three. Hey, neat. Show me how to do it, will you, Unc? Sure. Now, you see, it's all a matter of rhythm. One. <laughs> What's the matter, Unc? I've lost my rhythm. Uh, Leroy, will you tell your sister I've gone out for a little walk? Oh, you can't take it, huh? Nothing of the kind, my boy. I simply feel the need of a little fresh air. <laughs> Judge, that'll be the same as usual. Dollar eighty. <laughs> and four cents for the governor. You may charge it, Phoebe. Yes, sir. Judge Hooker's liver powder, one eighty four. You've made a pretty good thing out of my liver, Phoebe. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> dollar eighty a month for ten years? Of course it used to be a dollar fifty. <laughs> well, the cost of liver is going up. <laughs> Very funny. I don't suppose there's any chance this stuff will affect a permanent cure of my condition. Well, yeah, no, I wouldn't want to say. Oh, here's Mr. Gillisley. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Picking up something for your liver, Horace? I came in to purchase some cigars, Gildersleeve. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to lie about why I'm here, Horace. I don't want to buy a thing, Peavy. Just came out for a little walk, that's all. <laughs> Very athletic, isn't he, Phoebe? <laughs> yes, I am. So is my whole family. My nephew, Leroy, is at home right now practicing the manual of arms. My niece, Marjorie, is practicing ballet dancing. Wasting their time. Leroy will never have to go to war, and Marjorie will never be a dancer. Oh, you think not? Marjorie's very graceful. Shows real aptitude. She may decide to make a career of the ballet. You don't say. Yes. <laughs> Well, I understand the good ones have to study it for about 25 years, is that right? Well, I That's right, know. Phoebe. By the time Marjorie's equipped to dazzle an audience, she'll be um, 43 years of age. I don't believe it. With old-fashioned methods, maybe so. But these days, she could be a top ballerina in five or six years. Has Marjorie got her heart set on this, Mr. Gildersleeve, or is it your idea? Well, both, Phoebe. She seems to have a real talent for it, and I certainly don't intend to stand in her way. Why? Oh, nothing. No, no, Peavy, I value your opinions. What's on your mind? Well, I just wondered, is, is that the kind of life you'd choose for a nice young girl? What's the matter with it? Dancing is fine exercise. Keeps her in tip-top physical condition. Yeah, but what about her moral condition? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, what about those fellas hanging around the stage door with bouquets and so on? I, I'm speaking only from hearsay, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you don't know anything about it. Well, I know something about it. And if you let Marjorie go on with this nonsense, pretty soon she'll be wanting to live in some place like Chicago or New York. She'll be getting a divorce every other day. <laughs> you don't really believe that, do you, Judge? I certainly do. Do you, Peavy? That's the way of the world, Mr. Gillisleeve. <laughs> 
You're just a couple of old women. You're worrying about my niece being led astray by millionaires when she can't even do a two-step. Why, well, I thought you said she was already quite a dancer. Well, I may have exaggerated a little bit. The girl has talent, she's interested, but good heavens, she's only 16. This may be just a passing fancy. Seems to me you're a little excited, Gildy. I'm as cool as a cucumber, you old goat. <laughs> I'll leave you two to worry about Marjorie. I'm going home to admire her dancing. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Gildy. Goodbye, Judge. Don't forget to take your medicine. <laughs> yes, I wonder if there's anything in what those old ninnies said back there. Uncle Mort, is that you? Yes, my dear, it's me. You've got to do something for me. What's that? The phonograph. It's terrible. It sounds so tinny. Couldn't we do something about it? Couldn't we get a new one? Well, now, let's not put any money into this. But I need it to practice with. But, my dear, this whole thing might turn out to be just a passing fancy. Oh, no. I'm serious about this, Uncle Moore. But it might take 20 years. Not me. The teacher told me today I'm already showing improvement. Oh. Well, I'm glad you're improving, Marjorie. But let's not overdo, shall we? But I'm so encouraged. I'm determined to succeed now. I'm going to practice every minute that I can. <laughs> Marjorie, for heaven's sake, industry is all very well, but I think it'd be nice if you'd relax for a few minutes before supper. I will in five minutes, Unky. I just want to practice my leap a few more times. Your what? My leap. It's beautiful. Where do you see it? Yeah, leap. <laughs> Hi, Unk. You want to show me the manual of arms now? No, confound it. Haven't you got anything to do with play with guns? Gosh, I didn't do anything. Holy cow, you don't have to jump on me. You're right, my boy. I shouldn't take it out on you. <laughs> How long can this go on? Why don't you tell her to quit? Well, she's a girl, Leroy. Girls have to be human. Yeah, I suppose. Do you really think she'll ever be any good? Do you? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> you think a plaster will fall down? I suppose so. Dames, they're too much for me. Yeah. Have a cigar, Leroy. <laughs> We'll hear more from the great Gildersleeve in just a few moments. Does your family like French bread, the kind that comes in long, slender loaves with a crisp, crunchy crust? In our house, we stack the bread plate whenever French bread is served. And my, how quickly it disappears, especially when there's delicious, satisfying parquet margarine to spread on it. Yes, sir. You see, Kraft takes special care in making parquet margarine. Selected wholesome products of American farms are skillfully blended in parquet, and then it's rushed flavor-fresh to your food dealer. That's why millions prefer parquet margarine to any other brand. That's why parquet's flavor is still unmatched. Try it soon for a real flavor treat. Tomorrow, buy delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. <laughs> I didn't really give him the cigar. I smoked it myself. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Great Gilder Slave is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekham. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gilder Slave. Ladies, here's how to make leftovers not seem like leftovers at all. It's easy with Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. First, make a luscious golden cheese sauce with Pabstet and a little milk. Then pour this appetizing Pabstet cheese sauce on leftovers of meat, fish, vegetables, or rice, and you've a brand new delicious main dish treat. Remember, Pabstet comes in two tempting varieties, golden Pabstet and pimento Pabstet. It's ration-free, so buy delicious, nourishing Pabstet cheese food when you shop tomorrow.